Candiduria has been always a challenge for physicians to deal with. There should be no hurry to treat the patient or to dismiss the patient. Here I am Dr. Anuradha Sharma and we are going to get some insight how to carefully evaluate the patient for this problem. So candiduria involves whole of genitourinary system right from kidneys to urinary bladder and this infection can be ascending infection or descending infection. When it is descending infection then it is acquired because of candidemia and it has been found in various studies that renal parenchyma gets embedded in almost in 70% cases in autopsies. So it's a complicated UTI. There are several risk factors for candiduria and at a time more than one risk factor is present. Mostly patients are elderly women and they may be having diabetes or they are on antibiotics and then there can be some urological problem like some anomaly, some manipulation or the most common factor for ascending infection is presence of a urinary catheter. So manifestations can be contamination which is because of urethral contamination and therefore a properly collected midstream clean catch urine sample is very important. Colonization this is because of presence of a catheter or stasis and it presents as asymptomatic candiduria. Then it can be a lower UTI or an upper UTI. So asymptomatic patients uh, are almost 10% of unit cultures from hospitalized patients will be positive for candida. So urine culture should be always done on a clean catch urine sample and if second time it's positive correct the predisposing factor that is if there is a catheter if it can be removed well and good if can't replace it and after replacing the catheter after 24 hours collect the next sample and if that sample is also positive do an ultrasound on the patient to look for any fungal ball or any obstruction. If none of this is present, so usually this kind of temporary colonization resolves spontaneously without any treatment. So a patient should be just observed and no treatment should be given. Who should be treated in case of asymptomatic candiduria? So ETSA guidelines in 2016 provide recommendation that these three scenarios that is very low birth weight infants or neutropenic patients where it can be a seeding of kidneys from invasive candidiasis or where patient is colonized and is proposed for a urologic manipulation or surgery. So there from uh, the local site it can get uh, invaded in the bloodstream. So in these three scenarios, the patient should receive treatment in asymptomatic candiduria. Then symptomatic patients and critically ill patients. So here I'm mentioning critically ill means where we cannot elicit signs and symptoms for lower UTI or upper UTI like patients who are sedated in ICUs or patients who are delirious or unconscious. So, but if they are critically ill, here candiduria is significant. Okay, so in lower UTI cases, we must rule out bacteriuria first and if it is present, it should be treated first because in various prospective studies, it has been found that in 70% of cases, there is additional bacteriuria. And rest of the steps, if bacteriuria is not there, is similar to asymptomatic candiduria, but patient will be treated. After any obstruction with fungal ball is present, 
it is managed remember if there is any fungal ball so treatment will not be effective and candiduria will persist and we will select resistant um, species of candida by giving fluconazole in upper uti again bacteriuria is to be looked for and handled but at the same time look for candidemia so blood culture should be sent a uh, fundus examination should be done and ct scan will help us in localizing any infection in the kidneys where microabscesses or emphysematous pyelonephritis can be seen several complications can manifest as oliguria strangulia passage of particulate matters or pneumaturia in these cases the causative agents will grow on routine urine culture and most common agent is candida albicans and fortunately it is also sensitive to fluconazole among non albicans candida it is candida glabrata which is now called nicasiomyces glabrata is the second most important causative agent but regional variation can occur this usually doesn't involve children and it is seen in patients who have already received fluconazole in recent times or they are on fluconazole prophylaxis like hemato oncology patients or renal transplant patients remember this candida glabrata doesn't grow rapidly it takes more than 48 hours and in routine urine culture the plates are discarded within 24 hours so we should ask for fungal culture in these cases if we are suspecting that it can be a candida glabrata and um, because 80% of the isolates of this species are resistant to fluconazole anti fungal susceptibility tests should be asked then uh, the other strain pichia kudzev zevai which is again resistant to fluconazole it is inherently resistant therefore it is 100% resistant is another potential multi drug resistant organism and it is also resistant to flu cytosine and echinocandins then there is candida auris another mdro which has recently emerged so because of all these resistant uh, isolates which are emerging we should always ask for a uh, fungal culture with afst in urine cultures remember pyuria will be present in um, a catheterized patient even without infection so it's of no use but in a non catheterized patient yes it does indicate an active infection colony count is not helpful because uh, it has been seen that even with very low count kidneys have been involved so it doesn't derive anything absence of pseudo hyphae will not rule out uh, active infection because candida glabrata does not produce pseudo hyphae and similarly some mutants of candida albicans also fungal balls uh, obstruction or invasive candidiasis is more commonly seen in infants almost in 35% of infants treatment options there are three drugs fluconazole amphotericin b deoxycholate and flucytosine so fluconazole is an oral drug and it should be given for 14 days loading dose of 400 mg and then 200 mg subsequently every day in patients where fluconazole cannot be used then amphotericin b deoxycholate can be given on 1 to 7 days so means on single day also we can give this drug because it has a prolonged excretion in the urine and we can combine it with one of the oral drugs like flu cytosine okay and in cases of lower uti it is given for 7 days and for upper uti it can be given for 2 weeks bladder irrigation is not of much use recurrence occurs 
very fast. And another test which we must perform is creatinine levels and all the three drugs need to be uh, given, uh, uh, dose has to be modified according to creatinine clearance. Remember, lipid formulations of amphotericin B are not effective in cases of UDI because it doesn't have any renal penetration. Another fact is that when we are expecting these fluconazole resistant isolates, then flu cytosine should be used for negesiomyosis glabrata, but it is not effective on Pichia, Kozo, Zevai. Voriconazole, posaconazole and echinocandines are excreted in urine in very less concentration so they are not effective and they should not be used except mica fungin can be given as salvage therapy where we cannot use other three drugs. Antifungal stewardship is very important to manage any case of candiduria because if we give fluconazole then especially in asymptomatic cases then we will select these cases for fluconazole resistant species or isolates like uh, Nicasiomyces glabrata and Pichia kuzovazai. Recurrence is commonly seen after giving fluconazole for asymptomatic cases and there is no better clinical outcome in these cases. Not to forget drug-drug interactions of azoles, there is a long list and adverse drug reactions of all the three drugs. Then other yeast isolated in urine belong to either endemic mycosis which involve various portions of genitourinary system or some opportunistic ease can be found in severely immunocompromised patients. Even some molds like aspergillus and mucoroids are isolated both from immunocompetent and immunocompromised patients in urine. Trichosporon acai, uh, it is seen in renal transplant cases and all the three morphological form of an yeast that is blastoconidia that is budding yeast cells, arthroconidia and hyphae all will be present simultaneously indicating that it could be trichosporon and the ASMID and ECMM recommend voriconazole for its treatment because it is resistant to other drugs. So these are my references and I hope you like the talk and kindly uh, subscribe and give your comments for further uh, information in future. Thank you.